Hello, welcome to Mornings at the Allotment. My name is Rebecca and today I want to talk to you about what a strange year this has been, but why it's been a great year nonetheless. A couple of other YouTube channels have agreed to do a collaboration with me on this, so um, they'll be posting their own videos and I'm going to be making a playlist, so make sure you check out all their videos as well. Um, the year here in Germany in southern Germany started out with a very strange spring. Well, no, actually, it started out with a winter that was about five degrees colder than we ever get here. So many winters, we never go below minus five degrees Celsius. Um, minus seven, minus eight is the maximum, or rather the minimum we usually get. And this year we had minus 13. Um, so. That was already very strange, so we lost quite a few plants that are normally um, cold hardy enough for our region, which is a wine growing climate. Um, but yeah, after that was over, other things did well in the greenhouse, so I thought everything was going to be great. And then spring arrived, and then it was extremely wet and extremely cold. And then April, which is usually rainy, was extremely dry and then May which is usually warm here with temperatures over 20 degrees was like you would expect April to be so cold and wet so basically our whole growing season started weeks late um, and the only thing that wasn't late this year was blight both on the potatoes and on the tomatoes and I know many many out there have lost all their tomatoes to blight, have had to take their plants out. I'm lucky I caught it early enough. I had mainly early blight, the late blight only on a couple of plants and I was able to get that under control. I keep cutting back the leaves and it's not spreading. So um, my tomatoes are fine as you'll see in a moment. But that got me thinking and also um, some of the creators on the other channels thinking, if you're a first year gardener this year, you must be completely frustrated because nothing is working like it's supposed to be working. And this isn't only for Germany. I know the UK has had basically the same weather in other parts of Europe as well. Um, nothing is working as it should. All the dates on the backs of seed packets are basically worthless because the weather wasn't as you would have expected it to be. And if you've just started a garden for the first time this year and had to deal with this type of weather, had to deal with early blight, had to deal with not enough sunshine, too much rain, too much rain also meaning too many slugs, um, then I would completely understand being frustrated. And what we've talked about is that we want to show you that even experienced gardeners have had these issues this year. So. I'm going to be showing you what I can harvest now, what my garden looks like now, and I'm going to show you in pictures because I don't have video footage what my garden looked like last year and the year before that, where we had, well, it, the weather is never the same, but it was more typical, typical for our area. As I said, wine growing climate, so we usually have hot, dry, very long summers. Um, I can say this much, we're about four weeks behind with how things started. So the first tomatoes were harvested about four weeks later than we're used to. But if you look at the garden, it appears to be catching up. Um, and some things are doing much better than they normally would. I've got crops that I didn't get at all last year. So I just want to show you that um, it's very, very rare that Everything goes according to plan, but it's also very rare that nothing works out for you. There's always something that, will, that you'll be able to grow. And actually, if you only had a couple of crops and they were all failures, even that um, could be great in a way because um, it means you can learn from what happened this year and um, try to adjust your garden for the next growing season. So. Let's get started. I'm going to walk you around, show you a couple of things and um, add in the pictures from the past couple of years 
to show you what's been going on and how late we actually are in our garden. All right, as promised, we'll start with the tomatoes because it's a crop that many first time growers will grow and it's a crop that most people actually grow. I know very few people who don't grow any tomato plants. And actually, if you've seen my older videos, you'll know that these already started out really badly because it was so cold outside that I couldn't put them out and they didn't get enough light. And they were extremely leggy and lost their roots. And now, as you can see, we have tomatoes that we can actually harvest. Um, but as I mentioned before, they are about four weeks late and they won't be catching up completely either because I've had to thin them out quite a bit due to signs of blight on them. So, um, yeah, they, I also had to take off some of the tops. So yeah, they will never catch up but I'm really happy with the crop that we do have. This one looks just about ready for picking. It's called a black and red boar. Yeah, and it's getting soft and we don't want it too soft. Ah, and there's a slug back there. Well, I'll let that one go for now. Yeah, so um, I'm very happy with how the tomatoes are working out this year. Um, Looking at my seedlings, I wasn't expecting much. And then when blight hit so early, I thought we'd lost them. Um, so yeah, every single tomato that I pick is one that we'll enjoy and that we're thankful for. Now, my cucumbers are obviously not healthy and I've been taking off the leaves, but um, I can't get rid of it completely. However, um, they're producing and I'm letting them, even though it may make more sense to take out the plants. I'm not sure, probably would, but they are producing really well. And, um, let me see if I can get there. And back there and here and here and here. So I'm, I'm leaving them in for now, unless someone tells me that this is going to kill my garden for the next 10 years and keep prevent me from growing more cucumbers so do let me know in the comments if that's the case what i'm really happy with this this year is the greenhouse and that's actually because of the way we're using it uh, not so much because of the weather it's something i learned from last year um and what makes me really happy is that we actually have some cucumbers growing in here I was not lucky with cucumbers last year at all. So that's great. And what's also doing great is our chili peppers. Um, the first of these, they are purple and then they turn white, yellow, as you can see here, and eventually red. And the reason I put them in the greenhouse is because last year, even though we had a hot um, summer, uh, as we usually do. They were outside and they just didn't grow fast enough to really produce. So I put these in the greenhouse and that is probably what has saved them because I think if they'd been outside, it would have been too cold and too wet for them. So I think that's probably why they're doing so great. And also they like it hot, but they don't like it too hot. So actually the cooler weather this summer might actually have helped them. Another crop that I'm very happy with this year is the Hokkaido, the Uchikikori and Red Kori. Um, we have three plants and I don't know how many um, are already ripe. This one here, that one's ready to harvest. I'm going to leave them on as long as possible um, first, uh, because it's better to store them that way. But um, yeah, they're doing great and I will be harvesting the first one soon. And actually, if you look at the jungle here behind my greenhouse, they go all the way back there. And then the beans that are growing with them uh, are also doing really great. 
and actually last year also was a year that the beans didn't do well at all it was just too hot i i would have had to water twice a day um and i had other crops that were more important to me that i was watering so yeah this this bean jungle here is also something that has really profited from the weather we've been having and here it's the same picture with the mildew that i have to take the leaves off but um, these are spaghetti squash and um, mashed potato squash and a couple of others ah here african smaragd these are called their gem squash and yeah so these are also doing really well um, in the not so hot weather they're getting enough water and we're supposed to get some sun now so they'll ripen as well oddly enough the zucchini is completely healthy this is variegated leaves so the one next to it does have some mildew on it you can see here um i have been losing some of the patty pan let's see if i'll just take that one out some of the patty pan to some form of black mildew type thing. Um, I looked it up, I can't remember what it's called, um, but it doesn't kill the plant. Um, it just rot, rots off um, the fruit when it's too wet. And that's what we've been having, so I lost some of those. Um, just while I'm here with you, check. Oh, that one. That one can stay on for a bit longer. Um, I'm harvesting a bit um, to take to my dad's later on. Um, yeah, I've lost some of the patty pan to that, but as soon as it dries up again, they produce fine. So I'm not worried. Um, we had quite a good harvest off these two plants, even though they too have the mildew on them. There's the other one. Um, and that's actually something that I'm really happy with this year because last year the slugs ate all of them. And this year, for whatever reason, even though it was so wet, um, the slugs didn't want to eat my squash. So maybe I need to look it up. I may have planted them out later. Yeah, probably because of the temperatures. I planted them out later. Um, so yeah, definitely have more squash plants this year. Summer squash as well as winter squash because the slugs were more cooperative this year. Of course, where I was standing earlier, you could already see them, my kale. Um, and if you remember how frustrated I was with the um, spring cabbage uh, and, uh, well, all the brassicas I was growing um, over here in that bed, um, where I had planted salad greens in between the brassicas hoping for the slugs to go for the salad greens instead and all they ate were the brassicas well i never expected these to do so well after that uh, disaster so i'm really really happy with these and also they're doing really well normally they wouldn't be growing this fast at this time of year but our temperatures have been around 13 14 15 at night and well low 20s maximum of low 20s during the day and so these are doing really well oh and before i forget another thing that's doing much better this year um like the beans behind the greenhouse or the barlotti beans um planted them pretty much at the same time but um I'm thinking it's the rain. I think I underwatered them last year. So um, I will learn from this year. Uh, they really need more water. And look at this one. This is the first one. The first one that's drying out. I'll just see if I can open that with one hand to have a look in there. Just a second, let me put you down.
yep, 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 yep. Okay, I'm no good at filming myself doing stuff. <laughs> Our first Borlotti, because last year they never ripened enough, so we ate them fresh. And this, to me, is just amazing. Beetroot. My partner has been asking for beetroot ever since we started this garden, and I've never been able to grow them. And this year they're doing so well. So yeah, like with the beans, I'm thinking I was probably underwatering them because now they're getting tons of water and they're loving it. All right, so as you can see, yes, my garden is much later this year than it was in previous years, but yes, it's also doing great. And um, I actually just harvested the tomato I showed you and weighed it, it weighs 450 grams. And I think it's larger than anything we had last year. So, um, and it's actually a variety we grew last year. So I'm surprised because it has, basically it was put in the ground too late and then it didn't have enough sun. Um, the plant does have light. I took off a couple of leaves um, earlier this week that had light on them, but it's not spreading. And apparently um, the plant is still wanting to grow and produce fruit. I've also so seen a few flowers on it. So yeah, um, everyone who's doing a video for this collaboration in one way or another has a late garden. For most of them, it's the weather. In other cases, it's a big move or a loss of seedlings. Um, we've all had motivational issues at some point this year considered just leaving the garden to its own devices, giving up and planning 2022. Um, it's been frustrating. We've seen our seedlings die. We've seen them eaten by slugs. Um, we've seen gardens flooded. We've, um, we've not been able to walk on the beds because there was so much water in some cases. Um, but then if I look around, Yes, it's late, but it's catching up. And yes, I won't get as many tomatoes as I had last year, but I'm still getting tomatoes. Um, I'm actually harvesting about, at the moment, um, I've harvested a total of five kilos, but it's now regularly one kilo a day. And that's more than we can eat, so we do actually have enough for canning. Um, my brassicas are doing great. My um, summer and winter squash are doing great. Um, we have loads of Hokkaido, of uh, red curry and uchiki curry this year. We didn't have a single one last year. Um, and I've learned so many things even from the failures. That light, I would have probably been able to save a few more plants and get more fruit if I had thinned out my plants early on. I didn't. They were spindly when I put them in. If you've seen the video, you'll know. They Basically, they were they were long like this, and and they didn't look like anything that was going to grow and produce. Uh, some of them didn't even really have roots when I put them in the ground. So I babied them, and I thought, oh no, you know they're producing leaves. I'll leave those leaves on. That was a mistake. Yes, the blight only spread as fast as it did. The early I'm talking about the early blight here. It only spread because all the leaves were touching. And I saw it rain for weeks on end and I just didn't feel like going to the garden daily to look after my tomatoes. And then it happened. Um, thankfully, I caught it in time before the late blight hit. And now with the late blight, I'm able to control it. I just take off the leaves and it's not spreading, not fast. I get a couple of leaves on all my plants total. I get a couple of leaves um, every day that I take off and that's fine. I can leave them in. Everyone has, everyone here on the uh, site has a late blight. So it's not like I'm spreading it to anyone else. Um, um, yeah, so I've learned from that, you know, thin up your tomatoes more. Um, that my cucumbers and especially those beans are doing so well with all the rain. 
heck yeah, I'm going to be watering them more next year. I've never had such a great crop of, of beans, probably because I didn't water them enough. So that's a lesson I learned from this rainy spring and summer. Um, I've learned that I will definitely keep putting my chili peppers in the greenhouse. I only put them there in the first place because it was so cold outside or I would have put most of them outside. Um, but I didn't want to wait much longer because they also uh, need a long growing season. Um, so yeah, I've learned that chili peppers go in the greenhouse from now on. Um, I've learned that slugs prefer brassicas to salad, which I hadn't realized. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. Plant my brassicas in an area where there is no slug habitat. Um, do a better job of weeding. Of course, because of course the weeds were the only thing that grew really well uh, with all the rain. You know, they didn't need that much sun. They were doing great. They were covering the ground because my crops weren't. Uh, they were doing their job actually. Um, so yeah, oh, the sun is finally coming through the clouds. Um, so yeah, um, my garden is late this year, about four weeks, I've mentioned it before, probably about four weeks behind, but it's doing great. And most of the other gardeners I've talked to, their gardens are late for one reason or another, but they're doing great now. And everyone who is doing a video for this collaboration is in the same boat and they're all experienced gardeners and um, when you watch their videos um, you'll see um, that everyone has had issues to, to deal with and you'll always have issues to deal with the garden if it's not the weather it'll be something else um, and I know it can be especially frustrating frustrating if it's your first year, year gardening so let me just that, that was the reason why I initiated this collaboration and talked to the others about doing these videos because we are frustrated and we can only imagine what it must be like if you're a first year gardener um, going through this growing year. Um, so we just want to encourage you, don't let this year get you down. Watch all those videos, look at what all these experienced gardeners are going through, look at what their gardens look like now, um, even if they're late. Um, take the lessons they've learned, take the lessons you've learned, and start over. That's the wonderful thing about gardening. Um, if one year doesn't work out, the next year will. If I don't get tomatoes this year, I'll get tomatoes next year. I get a glut of zucchini this year, next year they might not work out. No year is the same, and no one's garden is perfect. No one manages perfect crops all across the garden. There's always something that goes wrong. And if it's not light, it's a lack of rain, for example. A lack of rain is just as bad because um, not ev I, we have running water on the site, not everyone does. So people are lugging, um, on other sites, people are lugging water from home to the garden if it's not raining for months on end. I think it was last year in the UK where it didn't rain for months. Um, that's actually much harder in some cases and um, will also co cost you crops. Um, so don't be frustrated. Most of all, don't let this stop you from gardening. Keep going, keep trying again, put some seeds in for winter crops. Um, I don't have a what to sow in August video, but some of the other channels that are participating do. Um, check those out. Um, it's not too late. For many crops, it's not too late. I can just mention what I'm sowing here. Um, I'm sowing beetroot and I'm sowing um, salad greens, mostly. Um, I'm actually also going to be putting in some beans um, and probably one or two zucchini plants. But that's because in normal years, we have a long growing season. So I still have, it's middle of August now, I still have probably about 10 weeks. And yeah, I can crop a couple of zucchini from a plant that is uh, planted now. Um, we might not even get our first frosts until mid-November, so we'll see how that does. And yeah, I won't be able to grow barlotti beans, but I can grow beans that I where I just eat the whole um, pot um, for fresh eating. Green beans, um, what are they called? French beans? 
No. Um, and so I'm going to be putting those in. And if you have a short growing season, start planning for next year. But please, whatever you do, don't give up. And if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Leave them in the comments of the other YouTube creators who are joining in this um, collaboration. Um, we want to motivate you uh, to continue growing, no matter how hard this year has been. And we hope that we're able to do that with our videos. So for now, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm going to be creating that playlist and I'll be adding the other videos as they go online. Mine's going to be the first one, so the playlist is probably empty if you're the first to watch this video. Um, but I know they'll be cropping up fairly quickly in the next couple of days. So I'll be adding those to the play playlist. Keep coming back to check because it'll. some of them are going to be next week. Uh, so keep coming back to check that out. Um, if you have, if you need any motivation, contact any of us. We're all willing to support you um, in your quest for a better garden next year. And we're actually pretty sure that you will have a better garden next year because no matter what happened, you've learned from this year. And now you can learn from what happened in our gardens as well. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, give it a like if you did. Uh, subscribe to my channel, check out the other videos, like them check out their channels if you don't know them already although most of them are much bigger the channels than mine so I'm I'm sure you have seen them around if you found me you'll know them um, yeah and I hope you enjoy the series of videos and I hope to see you again very soon bye